He's a Lord. Um, well, I'm grateful to have my mother, you know. God knows she's she's been a good influence in my life. I'm, I'm, and I'm very glad that I'm able to say that God saved her, that God saved her and that she's with us at this church. Um, condolences again to the Dustil family and I pray that God will be with you. May this song bless you guys, Virgin. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I can take a heart that's broken, make it over again. But I know a man who can. And I can take a soul that's in sick. Make it white as snow, but I know a man who can. And some call him Savior, the Redeemer of men, but I For he's my dearest friend. And if you feel no one can help you, and your life is out of hand, well, I know a man who can. Amen. And I can walk upon the waters, upon the troubled sea. But I know a man who can. And I can cause blind eyes to open or make the lane to walk again but i know a man who can and some call him savior the redeemer of man but i call him jesus for he my dearest friend, and if you feel no one can help you, or your life is out of hand, well, I know a man who can, and some call him Savior. The Redeemer of men, but I call him Jesus, for he's my dearest friend. And if you feel no one can help you, for your life is out of hand. Well, I know a man who can. Well, I know a man who can. Well, I know a man who can. Praise the Lord. 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 We all know that man who can. Praise the Lord. And we can call upon him anytime. Ladies and gentlemen, I now present to you Evangelist Darwin Price, speaker of tonight. Praise the Lord. 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 But before we close, let us sing. 
We need to hear from you. We need a word from you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We need to hear from you. We need a word from you. If we don't hear from you, what will we do? What's in Church, just speak up for the church, just speak up for the night evangelist Darwin Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Praise the mighty name of Jesus. Just praise the Lord. 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 I love that song that, that was sung. Um I really like it. Um you know, in this day and age, there are so many uh people going around and so many different people who say they're professionals and say if you are you are a plumber you're scared because why you know i get a plumber and two tools the man go make things worse mm -hmm. and so sometimes what you do is you call your friend or you call your neighbor and you ask them you know a plumber because you want a reference. You want somebody who knows somebody who can vouch for somebody. Say, yeah, man, that person, I know what they're going to do. I you know, Bridget, I think of that because we can vouch that we know somebody who really know what he's doing when it comes to life. Amen. We can vouch and say, you know, Amen. I don't know how to fix certain things in your life. I don't, I don't, mm. I don't have the solution. I don't, I don't mm. know everything. But I know somebody. Mm. <laughs> Who have Praise a track God. record, you see? Man, mm. that man have a track record. Five star ratings, pan, 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 gis. What, what, what the place them? Pan up work. Five star rating. Everybody, I give him five star. Because yeah. mm. he has a track record of doing a wonderful job. And that's the person who we've come to worship tonight. That's the person we've come to give praise to tonight praise, praise the name of the lord i greet us all in no other name but but the mighty the matches and the precious name of our lord and savior jesus christ i greet his i welcome the holy spirit with us even now i greet our past and his family i give my condolences to past and his family and mama um mama was and is a member of the church and more importantly now she is there you know waiting for that very special day where we were all looking forward to. So we give our condolences as, as you guys um, continue in this. Um, I greet our, our deacon and his family. I greet all the members, visitors. I see you, I greet you. And I just pray that this um, message would be of value and be led and be touched by the spirit of God. Um, my opening scripture is found in Revelations chapter 21. 
I, I, I ask you to pray my strength because I want to, I want to get to this passage of scripture, right? Um, but I'm going to read it and then I'm going to ask God to kind of help me to get back to it. Let's see if you understand what I mean. Um, Revelations chapter 21, reading from verses 1 to about verse 7. I'll read these follow. Revelations 10, 21, verses 1 to 7. And it says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I will make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of a fountain of, of water, of life, freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Amen. Glory to God. Praise, Praise the name of Jesus. Praise this is Lord. Revelation. Praise the Lord. This is Revelations where we are we're looking at the end of all things for well, the end and our beginning, to be honest with you. I want to speak on this passage of scripture, but I'm going to kind of take, uh, I'm going to use a word, a long way around. That don't mean I'm going to be long, I'm just taking the long way around. Praise the Lord. So, so, so keep this passage of scripture in your Bible. But we're going to go back, all the way back to Genesis, to come back to this passage of scripture. Where the scriptures tell us that God created the heavens and the earth. God is the one who made everything around us. And he went through, and while he was creating, the scripture says, he looked and he says, it was good. It was right. It was nice. It was just good. It served its purpose. It didn't have any problems. It didn't have any issues. It was good. But man, God created man and said it was good also. But he created man and he gave man free will. He did not create man to be a robot. And to give man free will, you have to give him the option or the choice to choose. And so God created man in a perfect setting, but he gave him the, the, the choice to either choose to follow him and to listen to and obey God or to disobey him. And so mankind lived and had a choice. But unfortunately, as we look through history, man chose incorrectly. Man chose to disobey God. God says, if you eat of this fruit, you shall surely die. And man to the influence of our great enemy, but nonetheless, our choice nonetheless, chose to disobey God. And the scriptures tell me that through that sin entered the world. That mankind, because of our decision, sin entered the world. We were destined to be separated from the source of life, which is God. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 17, it says this. And unto Adam, he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife and has eaten the tree of which I command thee, saying, 
thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and in sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns and thistles shall bring forth, shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field, and in the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return to the ground. From out of it thou wast taken, from dust thou art, and from dust thou shalt return. Mankind chose the wrong decision, and because of that, we were destined to die, and we were destined to live in a world that is cursed. The world that we're in right now is cursed. It's not how it should be. Natural disasters, problems, issues, sicknesses, death itself is because of our disobedience to God. And the wrath of God is God is upset with mankind. And because of that, we are, we are living in a world that is destined to be destroyed. And this world is decaying daily. It's getting worse. It's not getting better, Bridget. As a matter of fact, for those who might be scientifically minded, one thing I'll tell you that the world is actually slowing down. The spinning of the earth is actually slowing down. But another thing I can tell you that the, the moon is getting farther from the earth. You know, when they tell you that this world is here, this earth was here for millions of years, you can know it's foolishness because if the moon is getting farther from the earth, that means it was closer. If this world was here millions of years, that would just be impossible. But I won't go into that. Things are decaying, Bridget. It's getting worse. In Romans chapter 8, verse 23, it says, in Romans chapter 8, verse 23, I'll find it. It says, and not only they, but ourselves, which have the first fruit of the Spirit, even ourselves grown within our Selves waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. Let me read from verse 20. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same to hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of the corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. The whole creation, even the dogs, the, the cats, the trees is right now in pain because of the curse that is on the earth. But God did something in Genesis, back there in Genesis chapter three, actually out of love for us. In verse, in Genesis chapter three, verse 22, it says, and the Lord, the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, knowing good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, the Lord sent him out from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So God, realizing that man now knows good and evil and realizing that man is cursed, he said, wait a minute, we better be careful now because... Two tools him got touch the, 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 the tree of life and live forever. And you might say, well, you know, why would, why would that be such a bad thing? Well, because he cursed the earth. And he destined us to be separated from him because of our sins. And so if we ate that tree, we'd be walking dead. We'll be living dead. You ever see those zombie movies where the zombies just living, going, going about? We'll be living dead, Bridget. We'll be cursed and in pain and in suffering, but we'll be going through that forever. For eternity, can you imagine living this life, having cancer millions of times, having sicknesses millions of times, and never being able to be freed from it, suffering so much, Bridget? So out of mercy and love, God took away from us the option to eat of the tree of life so that we could live this life and die. And the thing about it is, 
this life is not eternal, what we're living in right now. It, it will not go forever. It's, it's not planned, it's not destined to. And the truth is, thank God. Thank God it won't go forever. This struggles and the sufferings and the problems that we face, thank God it won't go forever. Moses said it best in, 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 in Psalms 90. Psalms 90, let's read from our own verse six. It says, in the morning it flourisheth and groweth up, and in the evening it is cut down and withereth. For we are consumed by thine anger and by thy wrath we are troubled. Thou hast set, thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are threescore years and 10. And if by reason of strength, four score years, yet their strength, labor and sorrow, yet is their strength, labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. We know the power of thine anger, even according to, to thy fear, so is thy wrath. Teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Moses said, look here, man. <laughs> we, we, right now, we're enduring such a rough life. We're here today and we're gone tomorrow. He, he said, by, by, by reason of strength, three score years and 10. That's, that's three score is, is, is 60 and 10, 70. If, 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 if you might be here for around 70 years. And if you're really strong, you might go 80. Um, and with, 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 with medicine and something like that, with, with, with our, our advances in health, yeah, we might reach 90 and even more. But at the end of the day, our days are numbered. We won't be here for long. It's just as a, as a, as a passing thing, brethren. Moses says something interesting. He says, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. In other words, teach us to recognize that we won't be here forever so that we don't live foolishly. Teach us to recognize that, that, that there is a count to this thing. Life is not eternal down here. So that, so that we can realize and make the right decisions while we are alive. And so mankind on this earth is destined to destruction because of our sin. But God, out of mercy, out of grace, and out of just his good character, didn't want it just to end like that. And so he did something for us. He offered out, I would say, an olive branch by sending his son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins. Jesus Christ came to this earth and he lived, but he lived so that through his life, we can have eternal life. He died so that our sins, don't, we don't have to pay for our own sins. If we humble ourselves and accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, then we can be saved. He died so that we don't have to suffer the consequences of eternal damnation. He died to give us eternal life. But you see, Jesus' plan is not a plan of restoration of this earth. Jesus' plan is a plan of evacuation, brethren. It's an evacuation plan. You, you know, we might hear the news of, of what happened down there in Afghanistan, where, you know, America was pulling out and, and so the people who were there were American citizens, had to, had to hurry up and get to the airport as best as possible. And you know, you heard the news of how hectic and how troubling it was because, you know, your life was in danger and they, and they had to hurry up and go. You know, it's, it's not something very different for us in our bridging. 
Because God's plan is not to rescue this earth or to make this life, to make this life nice. No, Bridget. It, 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 his plan is to get us in the plane so that we can go off to a better place. His plan is, is, is so that we can, we can escape the destruction that is set for this earth. He says in 2 Peter chapter 3. Second Peter chapter 3, reading from verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. And the earth and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. This world is going to be burnt up and cast away. It will, it will him, him going to start fresh, virgin. Him going, him going to go new. Him can't salvage down here in a virgin because it is just so corrupt, mm -hmm. so sinful. It's like if you, if you, have, a, if you have a shirt and, and, and you put certain stains on it, no matter how much bleach you use, no matter how much, you know, whatever techniques you might know, no matter how much you wash it, certain things just can't wash out. This world is in such a state that God is not trying to save down here. He's not trying to rescue down here in this earth. He's trying to rescue souls. Amen. He's trying to rescue us. Amen from the destruction that is in plan. Mm. So, so this brings me now to my earlier scripture. Since God isn't trying to rescue this earth, what does he have in store for the children of God? What does he have in store for those who decide to get on the plane. What does he have in store for us? And Bridging, we can rejoice as we read what we read in Revelation. Because Bridging, I don't know about you, but when I think about where we are now, and I were to compare it to what we shall get, there is no comparison. Praise the Lord. There, there, there is, there is there's nothing, there's nothing where you can say, well, boy, let me wait and see if, 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 if there's a chance that there might be even or anything like that. It's obvious that one thing is better than the other. Yeah. It says in, 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 verse what, 20, in Revelation 21, verse 1, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there is no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. That's the first thing. Right now, we're living a life with confusion and everything because the truth is mankind, because of our sins, is distant from God. Back in the garden, God used to come and talk with us. Just talk, just talk. Like how you're hearing my voice now. God used to come and talk with us, Virgin. How much persons in now going through something in life and they, they wouldn't mind hearing the voice of God. Just telling them, just talking with them, just reasoning with them. In this time, God will be with us. There will be no separation. You'll be able to talk and reason with God as friend with friend. And it says, God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Now, Bridget, I, I think because we live in a, our society and we probably the society has heard the idea of going into the kingdom so much time that the idea of what we're going to get in eternity is, is been diminished. Like, it, like we don't fully appreciate it. Cartoons say, you know, we're going to do that, we're going to have wings and we're going to fly around in you know, the clouds and just like, we're not, we're not. But 
I don't know about you, but no tears. It says there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying. No more death. We cannot fathom what that means. We've never lived in a society, in a world, in a, in a place where you don't have to worry about gunmen. We've never lived in a world in which you don't have to worry about cancer. You know, for watch where I eat because mm. your man gets unhealthy. You know, for worry mm. about, about sickness. You know, for worry if you're going to buck your toe and Amen. something might happen. Mm. You know, for worry if you're going to lose your, if you're going to cut off your foot or not like that. You know, for worry about none of that. That just simply will not be a concern. Mm. We've never lived in it. We don't know how that, not even in our best, if you live in a gated community and you have 24 security and you have money tall so that you can buy anything and eat anything, even then you still don't understand the reality of no pain, no sorrow. There's, there's nothing to make you upset, nothing to make you fret and worry, no, no bills to worry about, no, no school to worry about, no problems to worry about. Weakness. No, no, no weakness, no, nothing, just, we don't know. Mm. We don't know, Bridging. We can, we can only imagine. There's a song that says, I can only imagine. We can only imagine. Because the best life that we can have down here, as Moses says, the best life you can have down here is still full of problems. Mm. If, you, if you work hard and work a million dollars, you have to work and live sleepless nights. You have to work and you have to worry and then two, two, you worry so the government take away your money or some family member or some problems. The idea of no, no sorrow, no pain is it's amazing. There shall be no more pain for the former things are passed away. Let's, let's think about that. The former things are passed away. That means the life we're going to live is going to be different from the life we're living now. Another scripture says, eyes have not seen or ears have behold what, the, what, the, what God has in store for them. So, 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 we can't, we don't even know what type of life we're going to live, Bridget. It, you know, we, we can't even say, okay, this is what we're going to do every day. We don't know the schedule. You know, sometimes you go to hotel and if you, you know, you, 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 you buy a, a week pass, you go there and it's so nice. So the first day is nice. You know, you get to go to the pool or whatever and they might have entertainment. And you go there the next day and you get to, you know, drink, um, juices and foods that you never used to drink and eat you know you enjoy and thing and thing but you know after a while you know if you if you dare try and go to a hotel and let's say you try to go there for a month after a while you know you kind of get bored as i mean there's only so much time you can eat fancy food there's only so much niceness you can enjoy but the scripture says here the former things are passed away so the type of life the structure of how life been stay we don't know. So not only are we going to go through life without death, but the type of life we're going to go through is going to be new, fresh, different. The only thing we know about it is what it says in, in, in Romans. Let me go back to Romans. The only thing we know about this life that we can be sure of that we really understand is what it says here in Romans. It says here in Romans 8, same way, verse 18. Romans 8, verse 18. The only thing we know about this life that we're going to get is this. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared to the glory Amen. that shall be revealed in us. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. The only thing we know is that whatever we suffer through this life, we're not going to be able for it. What we're going to get is going to be so much more. It's going to be so much better. That whatever we suffer, it, we can't compare. It's like, it's, it's like uh, what, what can I say? If, if I said, let me, let me pinch you and me give you a, a million dollars. Just bear with me, Bridget. My try. 
who wouldn't take a pinch for a million dollars? You know, what is the comparison? What is a pinch to getting a, a million dollars? Can't do all the things, you know. It can help you a lot in the bridge. I would, I mean, forgive me, I don't know if this is so bad, but if you says, let me pinch you one time, and then me give a million dollars, not a pinch because what me I gonna get compared to what me I endure, it's nothing. Glory to God. Yes, is, there any, is there anything we can? What, what, what does it say? He said, verse 5 in, in, in Revelation 21, and he sat upon the throne and said, Behold, I make all things new. Mm. And he said unto me, Right, for these, mm. these words are true and faithful. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. He says, he says He's going to make all Praise things God. new. Even the world that we're in is going to be new, it's going to be different, fresh, new, brethren. So, 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 there are two things that come to my mind that I want to remind us as we think about this. The scripture says in, 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 in Hebrews that we're just pilgrims. We're just passing through, Bridget. Now, if we're just passing through, what does that mean? What does it mean that we're just passing through? Let's, let's think about that. If I said to you that I'm going to make you be able to go to America and live in a mansion. I'm going to I set up a place for you. I, I'm so kind and loving. And I said, boy, you know, more you live good. And I have me, me rich. So I'm going to build a mansion just for you in a, in a Connecticut. I get one of them nice mansion house there. Them nice estate the way I see from far. And, you know, I'm going to make sure you say you live good when you come up there. You just have one thing. You just have to just, you just have to go take a plane ride, come up. You just have to take a plane ride, come up to America. That's all. Bridging, this life right now is just a plane ride, you know. This life right that we're going through right now is just a plane ride to the destination. Nothing more, nothing less. So, so it's funny because people, we are, we are kind of taught or we kind of focus on this life right now that is only going to be at max. What am I say? 70 years. And if you're strong, 80. Let us say, let us say science work out nice. You go to 90, whatever. It's going to be only what? Let us say 100. Let us say you live to 100. Compare that to eternity. A plane ride is what? Three hours. Three hours at max. Three hours, four hours, depending on where you go. Probably if you go somewhere far, yeah, it's 11 hour plane ride. But when you reach your destination, that is the real aim. Nobody gets up in the morning just for go to a plane ride. A plane ride is just a, it's just a, a means to an end. We can't be worried about the plane ride. So what if you have to go drive coach? Some people so rich that they get for going to first class. But so what? All right, they get for going to first class, but at the end of the day, we have a destination. Don't worry about the plane ride. Don't worry about what is happening now. We are com how can we be complaining so much about the plane ride when our destination is, is, is so important? As a deacon here, remember, so you have turbulence. Yes, sometimes this plane ride have turbulence. Sometimes it, it's troublesome. Sometimes you have to, go, you have to go drive through storms and it's up and down and you get rough bridging. Trust me, this life gets rough. But it's just a plane ride. It's just a plane ride. And so God is not, while God is a loving God and he's concerned about, yes, how we go to the plane ride, it's not God's priority for us to be worried about the plane ride. This is why we're not to be caught up in this world. We're not to be, we're not to be so, 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 so troubled about the plane ride because can you imagine if you dip on the plane and you start complaining because you never get no good food? You complain about the, the plain food. You got you got a mansion, you know. You got you got, you got somewhere so nice, but you complain about the plain food. That don't make no sense. And we're worried about the plain food, and we worry so much that we would feel like we'd have turned back. Say, me no, no, I'm about to take the plane. No, no, I'm about to take the plane because the plain food no good. That don't make no sense. 
And the thing about it is, not only do we not be concerned so much about the plane ride, but the mere fact that somebody who is a child of God finishes their journey is not something that we that we mourn. No, it's not something that we be we should be sad about at least. It says in, in Thessalonia, Thessalo, first Thessalonia chapter four. Give me a second. First Thessalonians chapter four, being from verse from verse 13 it says but i would not have you to be ignorant bridging concerning them which are asleep that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope for we if we believe that jesus died and rose again even so then also which sleep in jesus will god bring with him for this we say unto you that by the word of the lord that which the, that that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven out with a shout and with the voice of an archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And they which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. We cannot, this, this verse says that he sorrow not even as others with no hope. Those who aren't in Christ, those who haven't given their life to God, well, I mean, of course there's something to worry about because if, if you die outside of Christ, then where will your eternity be? But for us who know and have given our life to Christ and we're just on the plane, when somebody reaches their destination, you know, if we can't sorrow as if we as those who have no hope, because nobody goes to our airport and cries when somebody reaches the destination. If you if if you ever play go on a plane and somebody's on a connected flight and they come off of the plane, you don't cry and say, "Boy, I'm gonna miss you." It's all right. See you later, because you know they're reaching destination. So, as children of God, it, it's illogical for us, in a sense, to sorrow in the same way. That the world sorrows, you know, because our people, those who give their life to Christ, have just reached their destination. Praise the Lord. Praise so, Bridget, I just praise the Lord. Amen. I, Amen. I just put that. I just put that to us. I just put that to us, Bridget. I just wanted to rejoice in what it says we have in store for us because. It's not a small thing what Christ has given us. It's not, it's not something to, to glaze over. This world is not going to last forever. This world is destined to be destroyed and to be buried. But God is going to do a new thing. Mm -hmm. And that new thing is not going to be a normal thing. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm going to say it again. The only thing we know the only thing we fully understand about the life we're going to get through Christ when he comes back and gives and gives us eternal life is that whatever we're going through now, whether it be good or whether it be bad, whether you're enjoying this life or whether you're suffering through this life, the one thing we know is that what we're going to get if we give our life to Jesus Christ is that it's going to be so much better. Amen. Is that it's going to be so much more glorious. I encourage you, if you haven't really thought about it and you're probably thinking, you know, you're probably worrying about the plane flight or you're probably worrying about, you know, this, this, what is happening down here, this life and all these things. And you're, I, I, I encourage you to think about what God has in store for those who call upon his name. I encourage you to, 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 to come, come to your senses and stop worrying about this plane flight. 
stop worrying about all the turbulences that we're going through and focus your, 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 your perspective on what God has in store. He says that if you would repent of your sins and accept him as your Lord and Savior, you shall be saved. For God so loved the world that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. I encourage you to give your life to Jesus Christ while you still have time, while the evacuation process is still going on. Give your life to Christ. And for those and for the saints who are on the flight, yes. We're going through some stormy times, and you know when the the the, the pilot go upon the go upon the, the the speaker and him said, "Why we we have a storm in front of us? You know, it's going to get stormy. It's going to we're going to go through a thunderstorm. We can't go around it. We're just going to go through it. It's going to get stormy, brethren, but it's just a plane flight. Hallelujah! Mm-hmm. Oh, glory to God! It's just a plane. Praise God! Praise God! We're going. Amen. We're going. We're going to touch down in a few hours. We're going to go through some story time, but we're going to touch down in a few hours. Hold on to Christ, my friends. These are my few words to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. 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 Thank you, Evangelist Price, for that um, timely word, for that reminder. And we thank God for using you to bring forward the word. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we want to give you thanks. Sound words. Yes, we are the spring um, pilgrims traveling um, on this earth. And we are to take our eyes off the cares of the world. We are to take our eyes off those who are making it, those who go out and who can by the fanciest of the fanciest and dying at the fanciest of the fanciest. But when we keep our eyes on Jesus, he will Isn't give us right. what we didn't get. He will give us everything, eternal life. The word said, I am the bread of life. I am the living Amen. water. So let us focus on that and don't keep our eyes on earthly things that will disappear soon because when we die in our brethren, we can't carry any one of them with us, but our soul, that is what is important. Our soul is important to God and the enemy also wants our soul. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a tug and war. Who will get our soul? So we have to walk in the light. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord so that we can reap what God has for us, what he has promised us in his words, eternal life. Praise the Lord. No more sickness, no more disease, no more hunger, no more thirst, but we will have him eternal thirst, eternal um, food. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So thank you again, Evangelist Price, for those words. And uh, before we close, brethren, can we just give a, a um, 10 second silence just to remember Mama before we close? Just 10 minutes, respect, silence. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I think 10 seconds gone. I, don't, I wasn't timing it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.